What's going on guys, this is Rob, and we are back with, well not really back, uh, we're doing Moon Knight, the story where he fights Deadpool. Now, this is also important because, strange enough, it's the first time Moon Knight meets Deadpool, which is one of the downsides to Vengeance of Moon Knight. The story itself was great, right? The first six issues were great, and I pretty much loved the whole run, but there were some things that just kind of stretched the limits of credulity. Like, this is really the first time that Moon Knight has ever met Deadpool, or the two of them have ever heard of each other especially considering the fact that Moon Knight was a member of the Avengers at one point in time, but hey, you just gotta roll with it. But what ends up happening here is Mark Spector basically gets word that there's a kind of disturbance at Mount Sinai Hospital, and when he gets there, he finds a piece of pizza. Now, as he's making his way through this place, <laughs> <laughs> everybody is absolutely terrified right and they're like it was it was absolutely crazy it was this crazy guy none of the patients are touched which is really kind of weird to him because his thought is if somebody's going to break into a hospital you'd probably go after the patients but when he ends up smashing into a room which where the door was basically still moving indicating the person has just gotten there he's met by deadpool <laughs> now right off the bat Moon Knight attacks Deadpool. Now, the reason for this is because at this point in time in Moon Knight's story, this is part of what was called the Heroic Age. And the Heroic Age was kind of like the, the aftermath or sort of the new era uh, during this 10-year run or 10-year rework of Marvel Comics at the hands of Editor-in-Chief Joe Quesada. That what you had really going from, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to spot an exact time frame, but you could really go with like Avengers Disassembled and Spider-Man One More Day running all the way up like through the entire 2000s, right? So running all the way up to 2009, 2010 with the conclusion of Dark Reign, which was basically a wholesale reworking of the superhero community. And since the superheroes had become too dark, they had become too gritty, and the goal was to basically take them back to their roots as being superheroes. Now, fat lot of good it did. Literally within two years, Cyclops of the X-Men killed Professor X and the Avengers vs. X-Men storyline. So they didn't really return to classic superhero themes. Uh, some of them did, some of them didn't. But for, for Moon Knight, this is a kind of an era in his character's history where he doesn't kill. So that's kind of the Batman parallel, right? Batman doesn't kill, Moon Knight doesn't kill, which by all standards, just because a hero doesn't kill does not mean they're Batman. It's everything else about Moon Knight that basically makes him Batman in addition to this. So that's kind of the thing that, that really kicks off here. So of course a fight breaks out between himself and Deadpool because as far as he's concerned, Deadpool's just killing a coma patient in a hospital. He doesn't really know the full story here. Now, one of the things that really, really split the, the comic book community when this story came out is whether or not Moon Knight could actually defeat Deadpool. He actually does. Like, he overcomes Deadpool. Like, he's able to basically thwart him. Now, it's not a full-on knockdown drag-out fight. I mean, it is to a degree, but it's one of those things where, like, Moon Knight gets the upper hand, and then, like, a super hot nurse comes out of, like, the elevator, wearing virtually nothing, with, like, some beers and some pizza, which, as we know with Deadpool, is always a fantastic thing. <laughs> but ultimately, Moon Knight takes that kind of distraction to get the upper hand, and then throws, uh, throws Deadpool out a window, and when he looks down, of course, Deadpool's basically gone. But that was kind of the question is could Deadpool or could, could Moon Knight actually defeat Deadpool? Now what you'll see over the course of this is that it's actually handled really really well and it is believable that Mark Spector could defeat Deadpool. But what is going on is that Moon Knight basically takes a step back and starts looking at everything that's going on analyzing this and realizing that the guy he saved and the person that Deadpool was going to kill was somebody named Herman Goncharenko. And the whole idea behind this is that this was a guy who came from the Ukraine and was basically running guns and all kinds of stuff throughout the US. He essentially created a kind of mob life for himself. Not only that, the idea here is that while he loved everything going on in the States, that he started getting himself involved in legitimate businesses, which in effect basically means money laundering. But the other part of this is that in order to make room for like his developments, the things he wanted to build, right, in order to expand his own wealth on a, uh, on a legitimate level, he would basically force people out of their homes. Now, almost everybody who was confronted by his men basically left because they knew that like they would end up getting killed if they didn't. But there were some who refused to leave, right? Who basically play, uh, played it brave. And the way that would play out is suddenly they would go missing. People would just disappear. Bodies would show up somewhere, right? So very much kind of keeping him and his men off the books in so far as having any direct involvement with regards to what's going on. But they were basically killing people who refused to move out of their homes in an effort to like remove them from the equation as well as instill fear across everybody else, right? Make an example out of person A. And if person B 
is scared enough, they'll do whatever you tell them to. And so that was really what he was going with here. The problem is that as with most cases in this, and it's one of those things that, that Moon Knight kind of hits on, he's like, that's the problem with due process, and that's the beauty of America. Innocent until proven guilty. That while you may know that they're guilty, it's like that line from Law Abiding Citizen, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove in court. That's what matters the most. So even if everybody knows that this person committed this crime, that's not enough. You have to provide evidence to link them to the crime. And so long as that evidence isn't there, there's nothing that can be done. That's literally how they got Al Capone on tax evasion. They couldn't get him for anything else. <laughs> the guy was squeaky clean. Which, by the way, uh, if you guys ever saw Boardwalk Empire, that show's amazing. But unless, so, so back into this, what we end up finding out is that the person who hired Deadpool is actually one of the victims of Herman himself. That this woman, her family was basically killed. Her husband and her daughter were killed by this guy in an effort to, like, get them to leave their home. And while it seemed to work, what ended up happening is, of course, she swore out a vendetta. Now, one of the funny things about this is that uh, when he shows up and he's basically talking to her, she asks the question, is he dead? The response to Deadpool is, no, no, like, he's not dead. Uh, basically, a guy with a hood and a cape kind of thing, throwing stars shaped like moons. But do you think anybody ever gets hit with, like, the smooth part of that? No, it's always the pointy part. It's Deadpool going on his little tangents. <laughs> <laughs> this is random little things. And that's what's kind of funny is because, of course, that's when the woman kind of gives her backstory. You know, we basically learn what had gone on that is very much like a personal thing. Not only that, she wants him killed. She doesn't want him dead. Now, there is a distinction here. The distinction being that this guy's basically dying already. But it's not enough that he die of natural causes because in her mind, and I could see the justification in this, she sees it as though he kind of got away with it all. What she wants is for him to be killed so he knows someone figured him out. Like someone has basically found a way to get rid of him, right? Someone finally got their revenge. She finally got her revenge. Now, when, when Deadpool and Moon Knight end up meeting up a second time, this is when things are intriguing. Because when Deadpool's kind of like, okay, so how did you find me? The response of Moon Knight is, somebody hired you. Somebody hired you to do this job. They hired you to take this guy out. Uh, and at the end of the day, I totally get what you're essentially coming from, but I can't support this, right? I cannot support you going out and just killing a guy because of some stuff that he did. That at the end of the day, due process has to reign supreme. Now, the funny thing here is Deadpool's response is like, get out of this while you can, Moon Knight. Like, your heart's not in this. Somebody tells me that maybe you get what it is that I'm doing, and you've even done the pay for slay yourself. And so he asks, like, what happened to you, right? Like, that you're here now wasting my time with the school harm routine, right? Your knees a little wobbly and beneath that kind of stuff. You know, it's one of those things where Deadpool kind of taunts him a little bit. Now, here's the thing to understand, that while this is Moon Knight, by and large, this is the Jake Lockley persona that's basically operating here. That's one of the things to remember, is that uh, that Moon Knight has three different identities, right? You've basically got, like, the Moon Knight character. But beyond that, you have Mark Spector, who is the, I guess, identity number one, the original person person who eventually became Moon Knight when he was left for dead by Raul Bushman and left below the statue of uh, Khonshu and then ultimately agreed to become Khonshu's agent on Earth in order to have his life restored. And then there is Jake Lockley and there's Steve Grant. Now the whole idea of Moon Knight having disassociative identity disorder is that he created the identity of Jake Lockley in order to operate on the ground level, keep his ear to the ground, talk to people who were basically vagrants and gain information and so on. And Steve Grant is his quote unquote Bruce Wayne persona. But ultimately he got lost in those. And so he doesn't know which one is which. And there's even been different stories where they tease the idea that the creation of Jake Lockley and the creation of Steve Grant weren't necessarily done for the purpose of helping Moon Knight achieve his goal to rid the world of crime, but is actually rooted in his ability to cope with the circumstances that he's in. That they're essentially identities of escape, and that in an attempt to escape, he got lost in those identities. So it depends on, on you know, what era of stories you're reading, right? Who it is that you're talking to. But in the midst of this conflict with Deadpool, he's basically informed that there's an abandoned building in Hell's Kitchen that's owned by one of Herman's shell corporations. And that's the best place to start because if his shell corporation owns it, nothing links it directly to him. And so if it's something where like some kind of act goes down or for whatever reason, cops end up invading the premises, that in effect, Herman has no involvement. He's like, I have no idea what's going on there, right? It's, this company owned it. And that's as far as they can go with it. They can't actually trace it back to him, at least not legally anyway. I mean, I'm sure they could use all kinds of illegal tactics to actually trace it back to Herman, but legally they can't necessarily go that way. What we also end up finding out is that there was a recent incident where a kid went missing, and that presumably Herman was behind it, which is one, what brings Deadpool in, but two, what also keeps Moon Knight on the trail, trying to find a way to bring this guy down. Now, of course, the kid is very much alive, but the henchmen ultimately decide to make the move of taking the kid out, just because of the fact that they don't think their boss is going to return. So it's just like, get rid of this kid so that we don't have any loose ends, right? And then whatever happens, happens. Now, of course, as you would expect, uh, Moon Knight lets the kid die.
That's not true. I don't know why I told you guys that. Of course he steps in. <laughs> of course Moon Knight steps in and basically saves this kid's life and essentially beats the crap out of these guys, right? Absolutely torments these guys and then ultimately ends up liberating the kid, basically freeing the kid, getting him out of there and getting him back to safety. At that point, it's okay, what do we find the rest of these guys, right? Like how do we get the rest of this stuff sorted out? Basically interrogating the, the henchmen of Herman and so on and so forth. He ultimately ends up at Mr. Flappy's Funhouse, <laughs> which I gotta admit is kind of a hilarious name name for a uh, for a little bit of a carnival or I guess a fair or whatever you want to call it right some just kind of theme park of sorts uh but ultimately again a fight breaks out between the two now unlike the previous fight that we saw this is the actual fight between the two right this is a knockdown drag out no holds barred fight now one of the things to also know is that Khonshu over the course of the vengeance of Moon Knight has always kind of been lingering in the background that Moon Knight's always been trying to basically ignore the influence of Khonshu but the more he ignores it the more I guess the larger Khonshu becomes the more impactful he becomes. It's one of those things where it kind of runs in parallel with the concern Moon Knight has of that, you know, Deadpool making the statement, your heart's not in this, him kind of asking the question, how long can I maintain this no-killing rule? And when will I eventually fall back into killing bad guys? I mean, more recently, we know that he fell back into it pretty fast. I mean, literally, this run only lasted 10 issues, and then it was relaunched as Moon Knight Volume 3. But the thing about this is that, uh, that Khonshu just kind of lingers in the background there, which is why you see him, and you see him kind of trying to subtly influence Moon Knight, get him to kill, that kind of stuff. The fact remains that in terms of fighting between these two, and this is where things get highly debatable, so I wouldn't be surprised if the comment section goes kind of nuts with people going back and forth over who would actually win in this particular battle, uh, that the way the, the community more or less justify this or kind of split it is that while Deadpool is exceedingly brutal, Moon Knight's faster, right? Moon Knight's faster and I wouldn't necessarily say more capable, but if you're talking about two guys who are relatively equal in terms of their capabilities, I would argue that the faster one is probably the one who would win but Deadpool has a healing factor which really kind of adds to the complication of things because he can instantaneously heal from virtually anything any kind of pain that he endures I mean I guess it's not necessarily instantaneous but it might as well be given how like extreme his healing factor is and so with with Mark Spector realizing that what this does is it actually allows a kind of release right with all the things that he's been facing off against since the beginning uh, beginning of his no killing rule he comes to the realization that that with Deadpool basically having a healing factor, the guy's a punching bag. He can attack him as much as he wants to. He can tear him up as much as he wants to, and Deadpool can handle it. Deadpool can take it. So quite literally, this is not a traditional Moon Knight facing off against Deadpool. It's an enraged version of his character, filled with just like, just anger and wrath and all that kind of stuff. And literally, Deadpool is the source of all of that. So every ounce of capability for Moon Knight comes to bear against Deadpool. And that's why a lot of people say, given you know, given the, the right kind of context, Moon Knight could legitimately defeat Deadpool. But again, it is a debatable thing because I imagine a lot of people who are really knowledgeable on Deadpool, myself included, would kind of question that and be like, I mean, Moon Knight's good, man, but I don't know if he could actually defeat Deadpool, right? Deadpool is a master assassin. I mean, this guy has taken on and defeated people well beyond the likes of Moon Knight. So it's not as though Moon Knight's just fighting a random dude out there. I mean, Deadpool is a match for Wolverine and I imagine Wolverine could easily take on Moon Knight. So I'm not 100% sure how exactly this would unfold, but I lend more towards the idea that Deadpool would be the one to come out on top. And so ultimately what ends up happening is that uh, Deadpool is visited by the woman who hired him, right? And when she, when the two of them kind of have a conversation, you know, Deadpool sort of hobbles his way up there <laughs> and she asks like, is he dead? He's like, so remember that guy with the cape that I told you about? And she's like, okay, so like that guy defeated you again. And, and her question is kind of like, so basically this guy, Herman, just gets to continue breathing. He gets to just kind of continue doing his thing, being tended to by nurses and all that kind of stuff and you're being defeated by a guy in a white suit with like some some moon shaped throwing stars basically and so it's one of those things where she's like okay look if you can't do this then i will do it myself and so what ends up happening here is that moon knight almost seems to give up now there is some ambiguity here right the various faces of the victims of of uh, herman are really just kind of haunting moon knight here right like the people who have who, you know herman himself sort of taunting him like i got away with all these crimes right the kid that he rescued the people who have died it really haunts him and what he seemingly does is just cast aside this no killing rule 
Michael. He takes off basically with the intention of killing Herman himself. The problem is that when he gets there, right, this woman is basically shown up and she's masquerading as a nurse. And when she's told, we need you to basically tend to the patient in room 309, right, to basically ensure this guy gets his injections like he's supposed to, she rolls in there and then she basically ends up using potassium chloride. Now, here's the reason why she uses this, right? What she's basically doing is sentencing him to execution by way of lethal injection. The difference here is that potassium chloride is only one part of the lethal injection process. The second part, or really, I don't know, I'm not really taking this in order, but like the other two drugs that are used, there's pancuronium bromide, uh, which is basically a neuromuscular blocking agent, right? It essentially paralyzes you. And then after that, or at least as part of that, they give you uh, sodium thiopental, uh, which is also, I don't remember, it's got some kind of other name that they use for it, uh, but that's one that's basically an anesthetic. But in essence, potassium chloride, that's the one that kills you. It induces a heart attack. And so literally, she's basically sentencing this guy to execution by way of lethal injection without any of the other drugs that are used in order to ease the process. So she's basically giving this dude a heart attack and making him experience it. And that's why she says, you killed my husband and my little girl. She had curly brown hair. She loved broccoli, had a laugh straight from her belly. And my husband, well, he was the best, right? I always felt safe whenever he was near me. This is why I'm glad you're conscious. I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. And she says, this is going to hurt a lot, right? I want my hatred to be the last thing you see. Like she wants him to experience, like to live through a heart attack, not really live through it, but to, to feel the physical pain of a heart attack and to just die right there on the spot and she does kill him and while that goes down moon knight just kind of watches it right just watches it all unfold and that's where the ambiguity comes into play because we're kind of left here to ask the question would moon knight have actually killed this guy right would he would he have killed this guy himself and my answer is yes because by watching this woman kill this guy and then just doing nothing and basically just kind of walking away then at the end of the day moon knight realized this guy just needed to die right this guy just had to go he'd done too many terrible things to too many terrible people and the world was better off with without him. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.